headed back to the airport yet again. I'm flying to Texas. I think I've been to Texas. I actually don't know if I've been to Texas. I'll have to ask my parents later because it would have been when I was young. But we're headed down there to do some uh, testing with the guys from Catalyst Machine Works. Uh, they made, they've made a bunch of uh, drone racing frames and freestyle frames, X-Class. And recently they've been working to break into the cinema market. They're trying to find a way to bring FPV to like city style and city grade cameras. That includes, you know, RE minis and red weapons and like big, big cameras like that. And the first step along that route is that they've created a tool that they're calling <laughs> the money shot. Uh, it's a giant like 13 inch blade, 14 inch blade, X8, X class drone that carries a red camera. And to help with the product release and promotion and all of that good stuff, uh, I'm flying down to Texas to fly the drone for a few days uh, to help them capture some awesome footage. So we've got a bunch of cool stuff lined up like chasing supercars and rally cars and all this good stuff that should make for some pretty awesome content shot on a red, I think it's a red uh, Monstro, they said. There's a bunch of different versions of the red sensor, but... And uh, so yeah, so we gotta finish traveling, get down to Texas, where it's gonna be hot. And I'm really not looking forward to that. And uh, get used to flying a giant X-Class X8 carrying a giant camera. down to Houston, Texas. Uh, it was actually a really easy travel day. Um, because of the COVID restrictions, the Delta Airlines is not allowing anyone to sit in middle seats or if you're in a two row or like two to a row, they're only one person in that row. So I had a ton of space. Um, I'm a Sky Priority member, so I got upgraded to Comfort Plus and it was just a really relaxed flight on the way here. So. You know what? I am not complaining about that. Uh, the guys picked me up at the airport. Great to see him. I didn't really film anything then because it's just like, hey, how's it going? Blah, blah, blah. Um, we'll get a proper introduction to them later. Um, but uh, I just wanted to check in and say we got here. Really excited. Um, tomorrow we're going to get familiarized with the aircraft. We're going to get a bunch of practice batteries on it, get flying, get comfortable, get everything bound the way we want it to, make sure that everything is good. Um, and then on Wednesday, I think we're going to shoot some supercars. So stay tuned. I'm not sure how I'm going to cut this whole video up, but uh, be excited 100%. She's a beaut. She's a beaut. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm about to show you a beautiful motor. I think I've seen a picture of this. Yeah. Check out this What's with drone people and uncomfortable names to say to clients? You gotta have something that's entertaining, interesting. I fly this. Squirt. There's enough nuance with that that you're not gonna get in trouble. Between, between now the squirt, the money shot, and the thick, like, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's becoming a challenge. Yes. We are at Catalyst Machine Works uh, headquarters. That sounds corny, but yeah, this is our shop. This is where we keep all the stuff. We've got everything organized into bins, carbon, electronics, you name it, it's all here. We've got some vinyl flies over here that have been built. So we gotta take pictures and put these on the, on the site. But uh, back here, kinda messy. I apologize. We keep all the fasteners for all the various frames and things, accessories and whatnot. I'm all organized. Got everything labeled so I know what goes with what. This is our messy office back here. Some camera equipment, lots of gizmos and gadgets. We even have a bathroom. Look at that. Oh shit. And then up here, 
is the showroom, but right now we're in the middle of a pandemic, so nobody ever comes here. <laughs> so we've transformed this area to uh, where we can get some pictures done. Uh, we've got the big cinema rig right now, and so we had to have something that can facilitate uh, something of its girth, of its size. And so this worked for us, but uh, typically this isn't here. And we've got TVs and hanging from the TVs are some mounts where we can put quads and kind of display what we have for sale. And these have cool videos going on. This is a simulator. So people can come and, and run on the sim. We are working to break into the cinema world. And so we're doing it with this monstrosity. This is the money shot. And essentially what it is, is a uh, development of an X-Class machine into an application-specific cinema rig. Okay, so its purpose is to carry a cinema camera uh, at high rates of speed with a fixed mount and basically do the same things that you can do with a 5-inch quad uh, with a GoPro, except you've got a very expensive um, you know, cinema camera up top. This is actually a, this is an older red. It's a red Epix uh, Mysterium X. So this guy will do 5K. Uh, it'll do up to 95 frames per second. And it's a really nice camera. Um, this thing has got a lot of functionality that is uh, purpose built for filmmakers. Um, you can adjust the angle of the camera quickly. You've got these screws here. Just loosen these up and then you can set the angle of the camera. It's got an anti-vibration system here. Can't tell you a whole lot about how it works, um, but essentially its purpose is to take out high frequency vibrations from the footage. You know, so you've obviously got all these motors. This is an X8. So you've got a lot of motors um, producing vibration on the XY plane. So you can see here, you see this. So this is, uh, this is essentially decoupled on the XY plane and that's what removes that vibration. So you get nice smooth footage. Um, this was a real challenge to accomplish this because on a typical cinema rig, you know, you've got a gimbal and so any swaying or movement on the, on the Z axis is taken away by the gimbal but we don't, have, we don't have that, so we had to figure out how we're going to accomplish it uh, and get rid of the high frequency vibration, but not have too much you know, bouncing or movement on the, Z, on the Z axis, and so we were able to accomplish it with this design. Um, this thing uses eight X-Class motors. Um, these are 360 kV, and I think they're 4715 stator. And then we've got 12S power running through it. And we've got two sets of batteries, right? So these are, six, these are 6S batteries, and they're wired in series. Um, and then they are wired in parallel when they come into the PDBs. So you've got a total of 10,200 ma. Okay, <laughs> so there's a, there's a lot of capacity, uh, a lot of voltage, and with all the power, you know, we calculated out and theoretically we're making somewhere around 32 horsepower. But even at that horsepower, if you're typical flying, you can still get like six minutes with this. And so there's also a quick release system here. So if you come around here, you can release this handle like this. And that allows you to move the packs along this dovetail slider and set the center of gravity. So you can do that on the top pack and on the bottom pack. So that's pretty cool. And if you want to release them, let's say you're done with your chute, you've exhausted the packs, you can release this. There's a little, a little button here. This is a safety measure in case, in case the lever were to fail. This is going to run to the end and this won't let it release, but you push this in and then you can take these off. So they're quick release. Yeah, so we've got eight ESCs on here. These are advanced power drives. 
extreme re re reliable system. Um, that's really the only thing that we trust. And then we actually have two PDBs, so they're APD, uh, PDB 500. So essentially what we've done is we've got two X-Class on one system. Uh, video and control and flight controller? Yeah, the, uh, the flight controller is a uh, Radix. Um, and then we've got DJI FPV for that crystal clear FPV. Um, and we've got a separate battery pack that is dedicated to power the air unit. So that way there's no voltage fluctuations, there's none of that. And uh, it's the most reliable way to get voltage to the FPV system. How do you power the camera? The camera is powered this way. So there's a little voltage in, uh, DC voltage in on the camera. And we run it to one of these uh, XT60 connections here. But this is the prototype, right? So what we had to do, this is the step down here. Uh, this is a 120 watt step down. And we found out after the fact, after we had built up the prototype, that the, the requirements of this camera are 120 watt. So that's when we came up with this. And so we had to bypass the original step down that we had put in. But on, on the production units, you know, this will be tied in to the, uh, to the XT60 on the machine. So that's how that works. And that pretty much sums it up. Crossfire mm -hmm. built in. Yeah, we've got Crossfire. Um, this just has single Crossfire uh, Nano. But on the production version, we've got the Crossfire Diversity. So we're going to have one antenna oriented like this. And on the other side, the other one will be going up straight up and down. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we've got, you can see here the, the wires, you know, a typical, a typical build, a lot of guys will run it over the arm, but when you're out in the field, you're, you're having to grab this thing and, and move it around. What's we want it, what's it weigh? Yeah. Uh, All this, up. as it is before the camera, it's like 23 pounds with batteries, with batteries. But yeah, so we've got the, uh, the wires running through the arm and then out to the motors here. So there's a little grommet at the bottom that these run into, so you don't damage the wires. But, um, yeah, so it's really super easy to change the angle on the camera. Let me show you that. Let's see here. You know, that's something that you change your lens out. You got a different. You got a different scenario for shooting. You want to be able to quickly change this thing. You can just do this, and then you can set the angle like this. So it'll do anywhere from 20, 25, up, I'm sorry, 20 to 45. So you can haul ass. We found out with this weight and typical flying, we're usually at about 30. So just like a five inch quad that most, most guys run. But uh, yeah, Jim Fan props, 1310, 13 inch props. We found these are, uh, at least for this purpose, uh, for filming video, and just for typical flight characteristics, these are the best props that we found. They're lightweight, uh, reliable, they hold together, <laughs> and uh, we like them. So, and this this is something that uh, some of the filmmakers had a had a concern with is these these bolts here. I put in something called a Nordlock washer. It's got little teeth on either side. And so when you set this thing, when you crank it down, it's like a, a piece of redundancy so that you have to really, you have to really crank it once you've set it to release it. So with an overview out of the way, we headed out to fly right. and practice we with it. the money shot. We made it, finally, we're here. <laughs> finally. Oh, well, everything's fogging up again. No. Yeah. Yeah, look at the humidity. <laughs> Foggy. There you go. 
Before ever flying a drone in FPV, I always like to test it out line of sight just to know what it's going to handle like, what the rates are like, to see you know what it what it feels like when it lands and when it takes off. Because once you put the goggles on and blind yourself to what the drone is doing, it's hard to figure out how that's going to work. So I always try to take off and test it out line of sight before I ever put the goggles on. After practicing a little bit line of sight, we just put the goggles on and took off without the camera. It was important for me to fly the drone without the camera on board, just in case there was anything that was uncomfortable that I didn't expect. Um, you know, you might as well mitigate your risk factors by not putting the you know five six thousand dollar camera on there before you've ever flown the thing. To be honest, flying the money shot is a lot like flying. A five inch, right? It's a, it's an acro drone. It just you, you point and shoot, and it goes where it goes. But you gotta keep in mind that this thing weighs thirty pounds. Thirty pounds. A normal mini quad weighs, you know, six hundred, seven hundred grams, which is maybe a pound in the air. And so, you know, when it's thirty times heavier, you know, the 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 wind up time for the props, like when you're doing a split S or like you're trying to come out of a dive or something like that, like it, it, you have to really, really plan ahead. Uh, so we just did the first flight on the. Money shot. Let's see. So, uh, we did about three minutes worth of flying. Um, I just took it easy, just kind of cruising around, freestyling a little bit. I got it, got it upside down a couple times. It, it didn't care. It was, I mean, it was a dream to fly. Um, I think there was a little bit of uh, pitch wobble, but I also don't have most of the weight on it. So I think the D term was acting up a little bit, not having that normal um, amount of weight that it's compensating for. So I think it overshot it. So once we get the camera on, which he's setting up right now. Oh God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, nope, no pressure or anything. No just pressure. A red camera. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> uh, we'll, uh, you know, we'll we'll test it out again, and feel out all the differences, and I, I, it's going great. I can't wait to use it to film some stuff. All right, the red is now on there. This will be the most expensive drone I've ever flown by about twenty grand, maybe thirty <laughs> grand. So uh, let's hope it goes well. Flying this thing, you know. It, it's it's okay to say it's like a five yep, inch. Yes. It's, it, it has it's like a five inch plus, right? There's more going on, um, so you kind of have to, you really have to scale up right. like what your expectations are. Um, that being said, I mean this thing easily yes, hits 99 yeah. miles an hour. Um, you know it does not care about the weight. There's a little bit of tune bobbles that we're still working on figuring out, but I mean for the most part, like it is super super solid. As we're going, communicate to me the pace and just say fast or slower. Are you arming? Clear prop? Clear. Arming? Arming.
<laughs> You're about three feet off the ground. You are level. Two feet, one foot, cut it. So we've done a bunch of open air stuff. Uh, and now we're gonna try to do some chasing. So we're gonna basically send it over the top of these canopies and then dive down and meet the car running down the, the street. Um, and then we're also gonna do a shot through the middle of the trees and then kind of pop out and reveal the car um, just to get some more like, you know, cause just flying around, it only tells you so much about how that footage is gonna look. It's gotta be kind of chasing something and getting the motion blur on the stuff that's not moving. So I'm excited to try this out. My original plan for this flight had been to actually hit a gap in the trees and, and I practiced it with my five inch drone and, and I got pretty confident with like the path that I wanted it to take to meet up with the car. But when I got into the Big Bird, I just had that overwhelming sense of scale, right? This thing is so much bigger. It's not you know, it's not quite as punchy as the five inch. So I actually changed the flight path mid flight. And I think that's important for anyone that is doing flights like this is to just kind of be dynamic with it. You know, be aware of the size, be aware of what you're comfortable with, you know, don't take risks that you don't need to. And I think that the shot still turned out pretty awesome, even though it wasn't exactly the shot that I had wanted to get. Something that I forgot to account for when I was flying, and it's pretty apparent by looking at this DVR, because you can just barely see the tip of the lens of the red up there. Um, but what I didn't realize was that how far the FPV camera was from the red lens. And normally when I'm flying like a GoPro drone, the, the lens of the GoPro and the lens of the um, FPV camera are very relatively close together right it's it's within a couple inches but this is like almost you know eight nine ten inches so what happened is that you know I, I ended up framing some of these shots a little bit too high because the height difference between the lens and that camera was so much greater than I anticipated now that's not a problem with the design it's just something that I as the pilot forgot to take into account when I was planning out the shots that I'm flying so um, you'll notice that some of these shots are framed a little bit high and it's something that we corrected for um, in the next day but just it was just something that was like oh that totally makes sense All right, awesome. we are all wrapped up for t testing day. I think it was a success. Yeah? Definitely. It was not very enthusiastic. I guess it wasn't that great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, Nailed it. But uh, yeah, I mean, we did some car chasing there at the end. Felt Actually, I felt really comfortable with that, even though the anxiety was a little higher because I didn't want to hurt this guy's car. And it's, <laughs> and it's not even a $3 million car. Not yet. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it was super successful. We're gonna go look at the footage over some cold beverages, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, awesome stuff. Uh, see you later. Stay flying. Okay, it's time to head for lunch. And uh, instead of driving in the truck, I think I'm gonna go in this. What is this thing? <laughs> Here, introduce yourself. Tell me about your car. All right, this is a 1931 Model A Tudor sedan. The body has its original bullet holes okay, in it. This seat, well, this is really hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> it's got metal seats. Oh, uh, is the handle? There we go. It's stuck. Hold on, let me just reach out the window. <laughs> There's no seat. There's the seat. Oh god. We die like real men. There you go. Uh, yeah, it's chopped five and a half inches, channeled four inches, hand built frame. Small block Gore-Tec motor. It's a hoot. Uh, buddy and I built it. A guy named Steve Watt. He's an amazing, amazing builder. He, this is what I learned on. He taught me how yeah, to work yeah. on metal and stuff. It's really cool. So yeah, I can grind and weld, shape metal, and all kinds of fun stuff now. It is took awesome. us about a year and a half to build it. I got it done, and we got it done about November. No, oh, so it's pretty new. To you. Yeah, yeah. I just just got it done. Not too long ago. Done. Awesome. As you can tell, it, it has wait, no so AC. is it just automatic? It is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't fit a clutch pedal in here. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't fit my feet in there. Yeah. <laughs> I tried it, like I couldn't figure out where to put my right foot. Cause like it had to be up here. Oh, it sounds so good. <laughs> I 
favorite part is the surfboard. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty loud. Yeah, it gets loud. It's pretty deafening. <laughs> you can't you can't fire it up at night. Uh, or early no. in the morning. Well luckily my neighbors are all like hundred years old, so they don't hear anything they anyways. Don't hear anything anyways. Some fun stuff in here. These switches look awesome too. Which is this one of those the ignition? Yeah, this is main power ignition. Okay. This is fuel pump. Uh, these two are auxiliary right now. And these are my lights. So okay. Headlights and running lights, and then uh, gauges. That is awesome. Yeah, it's a good. What's going on down here? Drive. That's our airbags. Oh, okay. So it's got airbags in the back, so I can raise it and lower it. Huh. It's it did seem really pump. low. Yeah, it I does. Looking, yeah. I was looking back there. I was like, I mean. I wanted to drive a cartoon, and that's what I got. We built a cartoon. Giant wheels. A the headlights cartoon. are from a 1912 Packard. And with that, we wrapped up the day. Got a couple drinks, looked at the footage, loved what we're seeing, but we're really excited to get out tomorrow to chase a Bugatti Chiron and some rally cars. So stick with us until the next video, and in the meantime, stay flying.